Good morning, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Can you video? Video? Yes. I'm just sharing my screen. Can you just confirm it? Yeah. Feedback with the yeah, you can find your TV animation collection, right? Yeah, UV texturing in Maya, that I took. Oh, UV texturing in Maya, yeah. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, now, uh, stop the representation, eh? Yes. Yeah. So, I'll stay in mute. Thank you.
Good morning, all of you. Parmeshwari, ma'am, we can start. Yes, ma'am. A very good morning, all. I'm Chintana, and I feel pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of Dr. Jia Damodaran College of Science, School of Communication. I welcome you all for the webinar. It's my honor to have an eminent personality. Mr. Andrews Rees as a guest speaker. Welcome, sir. There are some instructions to be followed by the students during the webinar. Kindly mute your mic. Turn off the video. Do not leave the session in between the webinar. YouTube live streaming link is in the chat box. You can use that platform as also. Before moving to the session, let us have a brief introduction about our guest speaker. I'm really glad to be introducing our spokesperson of the day, Mr. Andrews Rees. I was very stunned when I went through his curriculum and I would love to 
said a few of his notable achievements. Mr. Andrews Rees is a very creative person who holds a challenging position as a graphic and animation lecturer who has proven able to teach world-class animation techniques and manage academic activities. He did his master's on electronic media at the University of Technology and Applied Science and passed out as the university's first rank holder. He did his advanced diploma in 3D animation and bachelor's degree in computer technology at Vismayam School of Animation, Trivandrum, and Manon Maniam Sundaranar University, Tirunelveli, respectively. He has been a lecturer in Nisva College of Applied Science at Omen from November 2012 till date. He has provided his services as the Hachori at IIMT College of Animation from April 2012 to October 2012. He has also been the Deputy HOD of Animation at Subalakshmi Lakshmipati College of Science. He has been an international animation trainer at Aptec from April 2008 to May 2011. To be mentioned specifically, he has been the Center Academic Head for Arena Multimedia in Jordan, Lecturer at Ministry of Higher Education at Sultanate of Omen, and also been a senior faculty for Arena Multimedia at Mongolia. He was also the senior lecturer and a multimedia content developer at Image College of Arts, Animation and Tech from May 2006 to May 2007 and December 2005 to April 2006, respectively. He is well versed in the software Autodesk Maya, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Flash, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Walker, and Adobe Illustrator. He not only took interest in teaching the wonderful skills, but also built his career up by working for Big Art Productions USA and UTV Animation Studio Mumbai. He worked on 20 episodes of an American TV show series named 321 Penguins. He is such an inspiration to all the aspiring animators among us today. We are all looking to grasp all the knowledge we can get. Thank you so much for clearing your busy schedule and making some time for us today, sir. Thank you. I now call upon Dr. Sasikala to welcome the guest. A very good morning to one and all present here. It is indeed a very great morning today because uh, we have our international uh, guest, Mr. Andrew Rees. Uh, so as Chintana has read out his uh, profile, it's really astounding. And uh, we are indeed very privileged to have such, uh, you know, a very good guest amongst us who's here to share his experiences and his knowledge with all of us. So on behalf of Dr. Jia Damodaran College of Science and the School of Communication, I uh, indeed extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Andrew Reeves. And uh, as read out from the uh, profile, he has won accolades and uh, great appreciation for his uh, graphics and animation feat that he has undertaken. And uh, moreover, from his profile, it is also obvious uh, that uh, he's very passionate about uh, teaching. So uh, I think this uh, session is going to be really wonderful with him. And I also welcome all the students who are gathered here and uh, also my team of faculty members who are present today for this session. Now, uh, over to you, Mr. Andrew. We can now start the webinar session, sir. So thank you very much. Um, basically, this is, I think, probably the most elaborate introduction that I have ever got. Thank you very much. So before I start, I would like to thank uh, the principal, Dr. Uh, T. Uh, Santa, the head of the department, Dr. Sasikala, the professors, the students of Dr. Jia Damodaran College of uh, Sciences, and a special thanks to Parameshwari Ma'am for making this uh, event possible and to give me an opportunity to present this webinar. So um, I hope my screen is visible to all of you. Am I correct? And I'm audible? 
Yes, yes, sir. It's yes. visible and you are audible too. Okay, good. Okay, thank you very much. So um, today we are going to talk about UV texturing in Maya, right? So before we get into UV texturing in Maya, let's first understand the three D animation production, right? So. Um, so if you look at a 3D animation production, there's basically a pre-production before this and there's a post-production after this. But when we just look at the 3D animation production, it goes through a lot of different process. So I understand that some of you here are uh, totally new to 3D and some of you have learned a little bit of 3D animation, especially with Maya. Right. So uh, if you look at the entire production, we have layout, we have research and development that goes through in designing the characters and stuff like that. And then the modeling process, texturing process, rigging process, animation, visual effects, lighting and rendering. So today we're going to talk about only texturing, right? So that's just the one little portion that you see here in the entire production pipeline. Now, even texturing itself, is a huge topic. We cannot cover everything from there. So we just have one hour. So we are going to just focus on one little section from that. So let's see what other kinds of uh, things that we can discuss in texture. So when we talk about textures, there are two kinds of textures that we can create in Photoshop in uh, Maya. So the first one is procedural texture and the second one is the file texture. So a procedural texture is basically a texture that is created inside Maya using computer algorithms. Okay, so it's an automatically generated texture based on numbers that we enter. So we can just change the numbers depending on how many uh, different sections we want to have of those particular uh, texture and so on. But file texture is going to be just a JPG file or a PNG file or any other image format that we can either create in Photoshop or we can even use a camera to photograph those texture files. So we're not going to talk about procedural texture today. We're going to focus on file texture. So even in file texture, we can create or we can assign a file into a 3D model using two different methods. We can either use something called a projection mapping where it, it takes just the picture and just applies on to a 3D object. Or we can decide which sections of those uh, image should be assigned to which areas of the model in 3D software. So what you're seeing here on the left side is basically the projection mapping. So when there's a cube and there's a simple projection, as you can see here, oops, Okay, so as you can see here, this little um, plane is going to just apply directly onto that object. So this gives us a little bit less control in terms of how we want the entire 3D object to appear. If you have simple shapes, just like cube, sphere, and stuff like that, we can use projection mapping. But when you have more complicated shapes, like what you're seeing here, uh, uh, a mushroom, it has got different shapes. It is not just one geometrical shape like square or um, uh, sorry, cube or sphere. So in this case, we have to use something called UV mapping, right? So that is what we are going to focus today. So I'll show you how to create UV mapping on two different models. So this is a simple cube, which has got little uh, smoothed out edges. And what we will do is we will actually create different uh, images for different sections of that cube. So that's the first uh, exercise that we're going to look at. And the second one is a little bit more complicated. We will have a house and the house is going to be having a lot of different extrudes in different shapes. So we will see how to just put uh, a two dimensional image onto this three dimensional object to get the exact look that you're seeing here. So uh, without any more delay, I'm just going to minimize the PowerPoint and we will get into Maya. So um, let me just start with a blank file. Okay, so in Maya, we can create, uh, I'm not going to talk about the user interface and stuff. Maybe you can just uh, get that from some other uh, presentation or uh, any video tutorials. So. In Maya, we can create two kinds of uh, models, right? So first one is called NURBS models, and the second one is called polygon models. 
Now, polygon models is the common, commonly used and that is the best for working on a production environment. So to create a polygon model, we need to go to create menu and then you will find polygon primitives. So if I go in here, I can simply create either a plane or a cube or a sphere or a cylinder, any other shape that I want. Now let's start with the plane and try to understand how we can uh, assign a texture onto this object. So if I have a file, just say, let's say a JPG file, which is going to be a rectangular or square in shape. And you can see that we have um, a simple cube here, oh, sorry, plane here. So the plane also looks same like a uh, image or just a JPG picture. So it's much easier for us to just apply this picture onto this object. But let's say how, uh, let's see how we can uh, do the same thing on a little bit more complicated object. For example, a sphere. Now to understand, sorry, not sphere, a cylinder. Now to understand this cylinder, I'm going to create a nerd cylinder, okay? So let's go ahead and create a nerd cylinder. Just make that a bit bigger, bring it up, keep it aside. Now I am saying that this cylinder is also created based on a simple plane like this, right? Now it might be a little bit difficult because you can see that it's a cylindrical shape, it is not a plane, but if I just take this nerve cylinder just for understanding purposes, you will see that all these edges are, or these lines which are in nerves called as isoperms are just thin except one, right? So one of this is a bit thicker compared to the other ones. Now that's because it is not just one edge or one isoperm, it is actually two isoperms combined together. So if I just open this up, if I go to this input section and if I just open this up with the end sweep, you see? Now, if I just unwrap that or open it, it can become a flat plane. So basically when you see a cylinder, a cylinder is also a, based on a flat surface. So what we can do is no matter what kind of shape or what kind of 3D shape that we have, we can always apply a 2D picture onto that 3D surface. Right Now you might think that, okay, this is okay easy for a cylinder, but what about the other shapes? For example, let's say if I take a sphere and I make that big, right? And this is also much similar to a cylinder, except the fact that the top from both sides are being, the top and the bottom is being squeezed to one small point. So if I just go ahead and to do the same thing, you can see that I can even open a sphere shape to make it into a flat surface. Good. So let's look at a little bit more complicated shape, uh, maybe um, Taurus. So Taurus is really complicated. And how can we make a Taurus unwrap into a two-dimensional uh, image? That's a little complicated, but let's see how we can do that. So first, you will notice that there is one isoperm here that is thick, and there will be one more bottom here. So now, I have basically two kinds of sweep here. So if I just turn this end sweep, you can see that I can open that up. Now, if I open that up, as you can see, it looks more like a cylinder only, right? So it's a cylinder which is being curved to make it fit from the top to the bottom into one single point. So um, if I just adjust this, as you can see, now it can be made into a simple plane. So it is a simple plane, which is being wrapped around or squeezed to make different shapes. Okay, so now I think you basically agree with me that any 3D shape or any kind of uh, bends or curves that you have, you can always unwrap that or open it up to make it into a flat surface. So that's exactly the process of UV, right? So if I take a simple uh, plane here, let me go to a polygon plane. Okay, now this is a simple plane. Now, whenever we create a primitive in Maya, Maya automatically does this UV unwrapping for us. 
okay? So for a simple plane, it is not going to be much of a difference. It is just a simple plane, and this can be directly applied onto uh, uh, or based on any uh, file or images that we have. Right, to see this UV layout or UV mapping layout, we need to go to a place called UV editor, okay? So if I select an object here, and that will show you exactly how that object is being laid out here. If I zoom out here, okay, and you can see that this first section of square, this first big square is basically the space which will be utilized by any image that you apply onto this object, right? So uh, let me just quickly uh, uh, find a little image uh, so that it will be easier for us to uh, show you. Okay, so um, I'm going to assign a simple material onto this. Let me select that, right click choose assign new material it's going to be a Lambert Lambert 2 go here I'm going to apply a file texture I'm going a little fast because um, this is just for your understanding okay so it open and then you will see that that picture that I picked up is being assigned here and you will also notice that that picture shows here right so if I adjust these points, now watch what happens. If I just go to UV here and pick up a couple of these points here, and if I move them, you see what happens here? It actually gets affected in the 3D space. So what's actually happening is we have a two-dimensional picture, and that two-dimensional picture is being applied onto this three-dimensional object. Now, um, there could be a little question that might show up all the time. Why is it called as UV? Okay, uh, the reason is quite simple. We have X and Y axis or X and Y alphabets taken for the three dimensional or two dimensional axes. So after X and Y and Z or is it we have U and V. So that's why it is called as UV. So UV is basically the two dimensional representation of a three dimensional object. Okay, so um, now let's see how this UV looks on a little bit more complicated shape like a cube. So if I just create a cube by going to create menu and polygon primitives, cube. Now you can see a cube, even though it's so big, <laughs> you can see that it is being divided into small faces. Right, And in the same space, what we have is we have different sides or these different sides representing as an unwrapped shape. So if I assign the same material onto this object, notice what happens if I just right click and choose um, existing material, number two, and you see that it does not look the same as it did here. Right, so you can see that has got uh, it, it made the image to be too big. That is actually because we have these different faces in different areas. It is not covering up the entire section. Now, I told you there is something called a projection mapping. So that's something that you can use to fix this issue, meaning that you can just pick up one face here. If you want this entire image to be applied to this little section, we can go to UV and choose planar mapping. And I need to actually project it from x-axis. Yep. So now you can see that this one face took the entire image. And again, we can adjust this based on this handle. And you will also notice that when I do that, it changes here as well. Okay. So that's just the basic uh, idea that you need to know about what is UV and how UV works. Let me show you just one more little shape, that is a sphere, because sphere is slightly different 
uh, in terms of the UV unwrapping. So you can see that the sphere has got little, all these different uh, phases. And you will notice that just the top phase has got triangles. And everywhere else, you'll see squares. So we're seeing all these squares. And just the top and the bottom has got the uh, triangles. OK? So depending on the kind of shape, uh, a primitive shape automatically gets um, gets a projection uh, by Maya itself. But for other shapes that we create by ourselves, we have to um, do this UV unwrapping by ourselves. OK, so let's just look at our first exercise. OK, so I'm going to open up this dice start file. OK, and I actually have uh, that completed. So let me just hide that. Yeah, let's show this. So you can see that this is a simple cube, which has a little bit of bevel to smooth out all these edges. And because it had its own default uh, a UV already laid out, so we don't have to do much in terms of UV modifications. So we can just simply take this uh, image or screenshot and start creating the texture that we wanted. So in my case, I'm going to just take this uh, screenshot to take the UV screenshot in the UV editor. We need to go to um, image and UV snapshot. We also have a little bit of advanced workflow with the help of a Photoshop network or PSD network, but let's try to keep things as simple as possible for now. So UV snapshot, if I just click on that, it's actually going to tell us, okay, where you want to save this UV snapshot. Mm -hmm. So it's actually directly pointing towards the images folder that we have in my projects. So I will choose PNG as the format. Mm -hmm. And the image size or pixel size is going to be fine. That is a good, fairly good uh, resolution. And the edge color, I want to have it as red so that it will be differentiating much easier from the uh, background color. I'm going to click Apply and Close. See Daisy. Oh, dear. OK, I just renamed it or saved it in a different name. So I'll just do it one more time. Go to image, um, UV scram, snapshot. And I'm going to give a name here, called it as uh, new guys UV. So hit apply and close. So it's going to save that file. And if I go to my project folder, images folder, there you will find new dice. Uh, uh, which is a JPG, sorry, PNG file. So now all I have to do is open this file into Photoshop. So let me just click that and drag it onto Photoshop, or you can just open Photoshop and then bring it over here. Now you will see that we have uh, the, if I just zoom in a bit closer, you'll see that there's these lines. And then we have the background as transparent. So all we have to do is we need to create a new layer it's going to be the background, so I'll bring it down. And I'm going to fill in a color, right? So first, let me choose a reddish color, a bit darker red. And press Alt and Backspace. So that's going to fill that color here, OK? I should have chosen a different color for this. Uh, so I'll pick something else here instead of red. Let's go for blue. OK, so now we can see those lines as well. So now what I have to do is, in the blue, I'm going to create those um, numbers or the dies numbers. So I will start with a simple ellipse here, somewhere around the middle here. And the fill color should be white. And I don't need any stroke. There you go. So let's try to put them exactly in the middle there. OK, and then I'm going to make some copies to uh, create the other numbers. So let me just click and drag here. So that made a copy. Um, I'll place this one here, make another copy by pressing Control J. There you go. So we've got two of these. So I'm going to actually select both of them, make another copy them over here. So this is for number three. So maybe I can just push this a little bit closer and make one more copy for the number three. So 
So I can actually group all these three guys together, so merge shapes, and then I'm going to make another copy, control J. So this time, Three of them are there, I guess. One, two, three. Yes. Merge shapes, control J. So that went there, and then one more copy. So I can make this six. And last, uh, we've got two more. So let me just copy this. This is going to be for five. This is for three, and then I can actually select these two, merge them, make a copy, control J, that can be pushed all the way up here. So last thing, um, I need to have three points here, sorry, three is here, so four is what is needed. So let me just get back to this one, make a copy, move that here, then one more copy, Move that up here. So that's it. So now what we have is we have the uh, different uh, dice number in different sections or different faces. And all I have to do is now hide this uh, grid that we have. Uh, that is the UV layout. And then I'm going to save this file as uh, you can actually have a copy as a PSD file. So let's say new dice UV as PSD plus. Along with that, I'm going to create a PNG file. Now, keeping this as PSD file actually gives us option to make modifications to it later uh, if needed. Um, you can also directly apply the PSD file onto Maya texture, but the PSD file will generally have a higher file size, so better not to do that. So I'll choose PNG here. So new dice, UV, PNG, um, let's say, Texture, it save. Okay, so now all we have to do is just go back to Maya. So we have this image, right? So let's go back to Maya. And for this uh, object, I'm going to right click and choose assign a new material. Um, I'll just choose Lambert here. Go to Lambert 3, go to options. And there we have file. Okay, so file. I'll browse and choose the dies. Where is that? I saved it inside images, right? I should have saved it inside um, source images, but that's fine. So as you can see, we have different sections of the image being applied to different faces of the object. Now to make it look a little bit fancier, we can just go back here, select all these layers merge all of them, and apply a small uh, bevel in emboss. That's it. Hit OK. I'm happy with the result. Hit Save. And we should actually save our textures into um, source images folder. So I'm going to do that here. This is going to be PNG. New dies, UV. Let that be fine. Hit OK. I'll just change this uh, texture folder here. Back. Instead of images, we're going to source images, new dies UV. That is the blue color. Hit OK. So you can see that that little uh, bump uh, kind of appearance will show up here. OK. So that's our first uh, exercise. Uh, let's move on to the second one. That's going to be a little bit more complicated. Now, because this object is just a cube with a slight modification, so the default UV works perfectly fine for us. Now, I'll show you what happens if I just make modifications to this, right? So if I just take, for example, just this um, UV, if I just take this and press um, shift right click and do a little extrude here, and if I make any modifications, you can see that this middle area, that is the artificially created shape, will not have any space in the UV. So if I just select this, you'll see that here, it just takes that little line, okay? So one entire phase 
just takes this little line. So we cannot put any kind of image here onto this object if we just keep this default UV structure. So that's what we're going to do in the next um, exercise. So let me just open up this house. Uh, I'm not going to save that. So you can see that this is how the finished look is going to be. And you can take a look here in the UV uh, about how this uh, shape is being unwrapped. So uh, let me just hide that and I'll just show the default one. And this one doesn't have any kind of UV textures done. So you can see that um, the shape looks like a house, but the UV looks like just a cube. So what happens is um, if I assign anything onto this, let's say I'll just assign a simple um, material here. So let's say go to Lambert and assign a checker. So you can see that this looks perfectly fine. This looks perfectly fine. This looks perfectly fine. This looks perfectly fine. And this also looks perfect, perfectly fine, but this top area doesn't. Because this top area is what we actually extruded from the base shape. So <clears throat> if you're just creating a primitive object and you're going to just simply texture that, it's going to be perfectly fine. But if you want to make any kind of modifications in terms of extruding or anything else, you will have these issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a very simple and beautiful tool in Maya. Now, this tool is not available in an older version. If you have, I think, 2018 or before, you won't have this feature. So I'm using Maya 2020, so I can do that. So what we need to do here is we need to actually unwrap this. We're going to say it is not just the cube basic basic shape. We have different kinds of extrudes that I've done, and I want to lay that entire shape into a two-dimensional plane. Right. So if I just click on this little button, it'll actually show us um, a little bit more color information. So uh, I'm just going to delete this um, material here. So I'll just assign the default Lambert one. OK, so def by default, it actually gives us two different colors, but we're going to just work on a little bit more on this. So to do this, I have to go to this UV section here and UV should show even if you have in uh, if you're in modeling. If you go to other sections, maybe it will not show here. So you need to be careful which section or which status you're working on. So make sure that you're in modeling and then you can go to UV and down here you will find 3D cut and sew UV tool. So this is one tool that will do most of the job for us. So I already have a little bit of cut here. The cuts that you're seeing uh, as white thick lines are these edges, right? So I'm going to basically remove those first by using control key. So press control and click on them. So it will basically get rid of those. Um, actually, I need a this. So I'm going to leave that um, or I think I can just simply start from the top. That's much easier. So if I just double click here, so you will see that that entire edge loop got highlighted with white, right? And I want to continue that. Here, 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 and I want to continue that here and here. So now you can see that this green color that you're seeing, this is basically one shell, or in other words, it's also called as island, right? And that island is actually connected to this area. So this entire section that you're seeing at blue is going to be one flat surface, okay? Now, <clears throat> next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for this other side. So let me just double click on this edge, then double click here, 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 double click here. Double click here. So it remains as the same color because the other things uh, out here changed their colors. So we want to have uh, this side also get attached to this. So I'm going to press control uh, and click. So this becomes one object. Control click here, control click here, and control yeah, That's fine. So now you'll see what happened is um, this entire side, along with the bottom, and these other sides have become one single piece. So let me just also uh, 
double click on this one just to split the roof. So now what I have is I have basically two pieces or two islands or two shells. So this entire bottom is going to be one and just this roof is going to be a different one. Okay, so if you did not understand, there's recordings, uh, there's, um, uh, I think YouTube Live is also there, so you can just watch that over. If we get time, uh, I will just repeat any of those steps if you want. Now, so next thing that we need to do is we need to unwrap this. Now, it looks pretty messy in our HUV uh, layout, so we need to just unwrap this. So to unwrap this, once we have finished this um, islanding process or splitting this or moving in, uh, sewing the UVs, what we have to do is we need to go to um, tools here, I guess, or modify, yeah, modify. There you will find unfold, okay? So that's just one little button. So if I just, uh, I need to make sure that uh, I come out of this tool here, I'll make sure that I'm in selection tool, select the entire object, and I'm going to go to modify and choose unfold. So you'll see that just that one click actually unfolded this whole thing. So everything that you're seeing in pink or purple color is as one little shell or one island. And whatever you're seeing as green color, which is basically the roof, is as a separate object. So now what I can do is I can simply right click and choose UV shell. And I can basically pick this shell up then move it to a different place. So in my case, I'm going to just rotate this um, like so. We can just keep it approximately to the size that we wanted. And then pull this here. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Now, do not scale them independently. If you scale them independently, what will happen is the proportion between the shapes might change or not might change. It will change. So it's always better to, if you want to scale them, make them bigger or smaller, do it together for all the objects. So I'm going to keep this a little bit closer here, select both, and then I'm going to scale them bigger. Because we have this entire space, so we don't want to use, or we don't want to lose or waste any of those space. So let me just make this bigger and move it like so. Okay, so if there's too much information, if you think, uh, don't worry about it. You can watch it over and over again. Um, this is not much easier concept if you know a little bit already, so it will be easy for you. If you're completely new, this might be too much of information, but don't worry, just watch it over and over again. You will get the hang of it. Okay, so let me just pull this a bit more closer. Maybe I can just make them a bit more bigger. So now, the same way as we did earlier, we're going to take this into Photoshop. So to do that, let's go to UV, um, sorry, image and UV snapshot. So click on that and uh, we can give a name here. So we'll call this as new house. This will be saved inside images folder. Okay, and hit apply and close. Mm, something went wrong. Now, if something doesn't work, all you need to do is you need to basically check here in this um, result area, okay? So result area is showing us that you must select a valid object or select a polygon or subsurface. Okay, so I did not select the object, that's the problem. So let's select that object and hit apply and close. That's it. So it'll also show us a result that, okay, this image is being created for you. Good, so let's go to our images folder. There it is, house UV. And I'm going to open that house UV in my Photoshop. So now let's just create a blank file. I'm gonna uh, paint white color as the background to start with. Now, for the wall, I'm going to use a plain color, or if you want to do some patterns, or if you want to take an image, uh, clone stamp, whatever you want, you have the total freedom to do that. Um, in my case, I'm just going to take a simple color, um, something closer to yellow or orange, make the brush size bigger, just paint that out, um, make capacity full. Okay, now if it goes outside, don't worry about it because we're going to put other content on top of these areas. Now, um, I just want to see how this is going to affect the model that we have created first. 
before we create the details of the uh, model. So uh, I want to create another color, give another color for the roof. So let's see, yeah, something like that. Actually keep the hardness higher. Okay, so now once I'm done with this, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I will go to my Source Images folder, New House UV, PSD, save that, File, Save As, and this time it's going to be a PNG file. You can also save it as JPG, TIF, uh, TGA, any format that you like, doesn't matter, as long as Maya supports it. Okay, so New House UV, PNG, Save Okay, and if I go back to Maya, select him, it is the default material. Let's just change that default material to a new one. I'll go to Lambert, inside color. I'm going to apply file. And I need to pick the new house UV. So you can see a preview here. So we have the uh, uh, the yellowish color for the walls and we have the reddish color for the roof. Hit open and there you go. So we have the walls with the yellowish color and we have the roof with um, reddish color. Good. So now next thing that we need to do is we also need to keep in mind one important thing. We should hide this layer that has got these UVs uh, drawn, okay, just before saving our file. And you can also have a preview here in the UV texture editor. And that will show us how the mapping is being properly done. Now, if something like uh, if you have a texture file already and you want to adjust your map for that, you can actually adjust these uh, points here. So if I just go to UV here, select that, I can actually adjust this. So you can see that when I make these changes, you will instantly see the result here also. So in my case, I'm not going to do that because this is being laid out perfectly fine. So let me select that object and get back here and we can start uh, creating details here. So I'm going to open up a, a little file that I have. Where is that? This one. So I'll open this up right here, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually take some um, content from here and just put it over to my image. So I'll start with this door. Or if you have time, you can draw everything by yourself. So this is basically your Photoshop skills and copying and pasting skills. Hit paste here and take this here. I think that size should be fine. If you think it's too big, you can actually make it smaller as well. All right. So one done, let's just do the same thing for the windows. So we have one big window. Copy that. Paste it here and rotate that. Actually, I um, want to keep this over here. Looking good. And I need to put two other small, I'm sorry, two other small windows. Copy, paste, and done. I need to make another copy of the same um, window. Flip it 90 degrees, and there you go. That's done. So let's just check this out. Go to File, Save, and I need to hide this little uh, UV that we brought in, and then I'm gonna save as. PNG file, new house UV. I'm just overriding on top of the same file that I created earlier, which has an advantage for us in Maya. So when I come back to Maya, and I go here, I don't have to import that once again. I can simply click on this reload button. There you go. Just go back here, yes. So you can see that we have the windows and doors lined up perfectly fine. Um, if you want, you can actually make it bigger or smaller, that's up to you. 
Now, about this roof, um, I'm also going to steal something from here, this image. Um, I can either pick up this one or this one, or this one, whichever it is. So let me just start with this. So basically, it's your Photoshop skills here. Um, whatever kind of images that you want, you can just bring them over. Um, I'm just going to delete this section because it's not showing me the thing that I want. So let me just, that's the last layer, right? So brush, brush, brush. Okay, so brush, change the color to white. Why don't you paint? Okay, normal. I messed up a bit here, that's fine. Okay, so now all I have to do is bring this over here. And I'm going to make it bigger. Now we need to actually repeat this uh, along this area. So I'm going to duplicate that and just place him. Yep, that's basically a very nice seamless texture. No, it's not seamless. There's a little bit of line. I don't want that line to show up. So I will just go here into this layer and delete that out. Control D. And now let's just try to put him over. There it is. Perfect. So um, I'll actually select both of them, merge them. Let it go a little bit inside. So I need to actually make a copy of the same for the top area. I'm going to make a duplicate here, press Control T, and then rotate all the way, 180 degrees. Bring this over. That's it. And now for this top area, we can either give a simple color or we can, let me see if I can take something from here. Yeah, maybe this area should do. So let me just draw with my selection tool, click and drag, copy, paste. I'm actually using my move tool, oh sorry, arrow keys to move that out. Just like that. Uh, I think actually it should start from here. So that gives us space for one more this content. <laughs> Maybe one more. Or I can just merge these two things and combine them and then scale them out. That's it. So now, um, I just messed up a little bit here. Let me just fix that. Take the brush tool, press Alt, click here, and just move over. So let's go to File and save um, this image. Go to File, and before we export, we need to hide this one. File, Save, File, and save as PNG, new house UV on top of that. Let's just overwrite it, go back to Maya, and hit reload. It actually reloaded by itself. So you can see that we have the groove placed perfectly fine. We can also do things like bump mapping, we can do specular and all those things, but that takes little bit more extra time so we're gonna we're not going to look at those things right now so one last thing that is uh, for this little section so if I just unhide that um, we can either simply give a color or I think I can just copy and paste this content so just duplicate that move this over We should try to keep it exactly in that line. If it goes out here, not a problem, but if it goes inside that side, that's a problem. So 
If it's moving precisely here, that's it. Press OK. If it's just hanging outside, not a problem, as long as it is not going to affect the UV of another uh, face. There you go. So that's fine, I guess. I can combine both of them into one object, let's say merge layers. And I'll make a duplicate of that, copy of that, and bring it over down here. So that's it. Let's just hit OK here and go to File, Save, File, Save As. This time it's going to be JPG, sorry, PNG. Save, yes, save. Oops, <laughs> one little mistake that I did. Forgot to hide this. Go to File, Save, File, Save As. PNG. Hit save, save, yes, yes. Go back to Maya and let's select that object and it actually refreshed. There you go. So let me just select that object, come out. Um, we might have to do a little bit of change here just to fix that little issue, but that's fine. Um, we can also do one more little thing. Um, we've got a little bit more time. So let's see. I can do a little fancy stuff here, just to add a little bit more detail, I can just change the, I can pick the same color, and guess multiplying, pick a new layer on top of this. Make it very soft. And maybe reduce the opacity here. And I'm just going to add a little bit of darkness here. It's not coming the way I wanted. Um, let me just reduce that flow. Or maybe I'll just keep it normal, just paint out. with a little darker color. I think this is not the dark that I wanted. Okay. Okay. Something like that. Now, depending on the amount of that um, difference that we needed, we can adjust it from the um, layer's opacity. Okay. So just a little bit of color change instead of keeping the entire wall to be the same color. We can give a small different color change there. So depending on how much amount that we want here, we can adjust the opacity. So let's say if I want just 50%, or if I want just um, maybe just 40%. So instead of keeping it the same exact uh, color, we can just have a little bit of difference. Um, one last thing that I want to fix here is this top, top area, I can actually duplicate the same, or let me just duplicate this one. I think that looks good. Um, I can also duplicate that to bring it over down here. Okay, so now, depending on your creative skills, you can actually take Photoshop painting to the next level, okay? To paint out the entire house by yourself. So let's just save this as PNG. Save, hit OK, save, go down here. Yep, that fixed that issue. 
So you can see um, this is how the UV looks and this is how the placement that we have done and this is the final result. So I think that's, um, that's it. So if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, by the way, I also have a YouTube channel and a website. Uh, you can also uh, ask me questions there or you can contact me through my email. So I think that's it for today. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, the principal, head of the department, teachers, professors, uh, Parameshwari ma'am, and the students. Uh, I'm done. And if you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you so, so much, sir, for the interesting and informative webinar. Let's hop on to the Q&A session. I request all the students to take part in the Q&A session actively. You can drop your questions in the chat box and Mr. Andrews will answer them for you. Uh, I know that uh, for some of you, it might be too much information if, you, if you're totally new to uh, Maya. And because we have limited time, I cannot cover uh, so many things uh, because there are lots of fundamental ideas that you need to know before getting into this. Um, because of the time limitations, I could not cover all those things. So once you get those ideas, and uh, it will be much easier for you to understand um, UV texturing, but uh, as the fundamental of UV texturing, and this is this is the fundamental of UV texturing. So, uh, if you get this grasp of uh, uh, what is UV, how UV is being placed onto a three D object, uh, texturing will be much much easier for you uh, in the coming days. So. Any other question? I think there are no questions now. Okay. That's it. No, no, no. You have a question here, Andrew. Important tips yes. for beginners. Uh, uh, from Amisha Bose. She, uh, she asked uh, the two important tips for beginners. Um. Uh, can you tell me uh, what you're doing, Samiksha? I mean, uh, have, or have you learned Maya already or you're totally beginner to uh, Maya? <laughs> Okay, so um, what we have discussed today is about just one section of Maya, okay? So as I told you earlier, we have lots of different process. So we have just focused on just the texturing part. Now, as I told you, there are different types of textures, procedural textures, uh, file textures, we looked at only file texture and even in file texture we can either do projection mapping or we can do UV mapping and we looked at only UV mapping. So um, as tips, um, this is my practice, what I do is I try to have uh, the Photoshop, uh, I use Photoshop for creating all my textures and um, I maintain a Photoshop file separately and then the PNG file separately to make sure that I have the high quality Photoshop file for further editing later and I will have the low file size uh, JPG file or PNG file for um, applying the textures into Maya, right? If you have, if you just apply the Photoshop file directly onto Maya, what will happen is uh, Maya will take more time to process the data because the file size is higher, right? So especially if you have a laptop that is not powerful enough, then you will have really difficulties in doing that. 
Now, one other tip that I can give you is um, instead of using JPG or any other format, you can use PNG because PNG has one advantage that is transparency. So if you save a file with PNG format, it will automatically have the transparency of that texture, right? So uh, if you're saving your texture files, always use uh, PNG, okay? So that's one tip that I can just think of right now. Okay. And here we have uh, actually, means, yes, uh, I have a question. Uh, there are actually four uh, phases that uh, you had uh, projected previously in the slide. Uh, yes, ma'am. Nine, nine phases, nine stages uh, involved in the 3D production. Now, my question is, uh, is it essential for the students uh, to have a thorough knowledge in all of these uh, phases or would you suggest them to specialize in one or two aspects of uh, this? Very good question, ma'am. Actually, uh, in all times, when I started up uh, as a student, uh, that time it was, we, we have to learn everything. As one who wants to work in animation, we have to learn from layouting to uh, modeling to texturing, lighting, animation, everything. But now they don't have to. Because uh, now when you look at an animation studio, there will be different departments. So for modeling alone, there will be 100, 200 people working. So they just need to know what is modeling and the modeling techniques. Uh, for texturing, there will be another 100 to 200 people working. So they just need to know what is texturing um, and for lighting and so on and so forth. So for every specific uh, section, so somebody who's an expert in texturing, uh, he does need, he just need to know Photoshop and texturing side of Maya. He does not have to learn everything. Uh, there is uh, also a, a particular ca category of uh, employees who are called as a CG generalists. So this generalists are the people who knows all these sections. So they will know uh, modeling, texturing, uh, lighting, everything, but they are not expert in any of them. So uh, their job is not into hardcore animation production, but they will just be creating simple stuff, simple uh, kind of artwork. So uh, uh, there is also, uh, there is both choices. The students can pick if they want to become a CG generalist where they don't want to specialize any of them, but they want to know everything. That is one option is there, but they can also just pick up one of those section and specialize in that. Uh, they can still uh, get a very nice job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. You're welcome. Which materials are used in production mostly, sir? Arnold or Vire? Uh, which will you recommend to uh, use in get the best out of it? See, uh, personally, I have more practice with mental ray uh, because mental ray support is being uh, removed very recently. Uh, I'm starting to work with Arnold, but I like the uh, mental ray uh, workflow more. Uh, compared to Arnold, but uh, now it looks like future is going to be based on Arnold. So I think Arnold is going to <laughs> win this race. And uh, I think all animation studios will move towards Arnold. Uh, and Arnold actually has very nice, um, easy to use uh, materials also. So you can just one click and you can get uh, the kind of look that you want, like plastic or metal or anything that you want. And they also have a very nice indirect lighting system. So uh, I think Arnold, uh, it may not be so perfect yet, but it, it is improving a lot compared to what how it was from 2017 to 2021 now. So I think Arnold is the way to go. So uh, start learning Arnold, get into Arnold. Um, uh, that's the best advice that I can give Gautaman. Um, Danush, how? Can we use UV texturing effectively? The future of Maya. Um, UV texturing is fundamental when you want to have any object that is uh, being extruded or modified. Okay, unless it is a primitive shape like a sphere or a cube or anything, you must do UV texturing. This is essential. But now we have a lot of uh, 
more advanced tools where we can do this UV texturing workflow much faster, like what I have shown you with the UV Move and Sew tool. Uh, previously, we did not have this tool. What we have to do is we have to select individual edges and then we have to say cut this uv and then we have to uh, unwrap those things a bit more manually now we have more of automatic tools which does the job much easier so yeah there's there's big future in uv and texturing is something that uh, even if you search in youtube you'll find very less tutorials in uv texturing compared to modeling and stuff like that so um, it is a field that many people are not aware of or not interested into. So there is a lot of opportunities for new students who want to get into this uh, section. And that is one of the reasons that I picked uh, this topic for this uh, workshop. Um, can How can we use UV making uh, mark? No, it's UV mapping. Ah, okay. <laughs> this question is so, on UV um, mapping. Um, there are um, there are other software which can also do UV mapping. So, uh, but Maya is actually um, becoming more and more advanced compared to the other softwares. Uh, let's say from 2016 or before that, we did not have these kind of move and so UV tools, right? In Maya, so uh, what people were doing is they create the model in Maya, they export it to other softwares like. Uh, um, cult 3D and stuff like that. So in that software, they will actually do the UV unwrapping, then bring it back to Maya with Photoshop texture, right? So now we have those tools right built into Maya and Maya is actually improving uh, day by day. They're actually taking tools from other softwares, implementing it uh, in here. So uh, there's, there's, uh, this Maya is going to be much, much effective in terms of UV texturing. And I think in the coming years, we're actually going to have uh, artificial intelligence introduced into Maya. So you may not have to do all these things. You have to simply just model it and give the file and it, it might automatically do the UV unwrapping by itself. So does that answer your question, Rahul? Okay, UV distortion, uh, when you do this UV unfold, it mostly fixes those issues, right? So if there is further changes, you can tweak them uh, with a lot of tools. Like Maya has got a lot of tools in terms of UV uh, tweaking and stuff. So if I just go to this UV toolkit, there you can see that we have like transform tools. We have um, cut and sew tools, unfold tools. So these are the ones that you can use basically to um, fix the modifications or fix the distortions that you see in the UV. And sometimes it, it is basically a trial and error process. You cannot simply say, okay, I have created one model. That means that I can do UV for any other model because every model has its own challenges. Uh, so because it has different shapes, it has its own challenges. So some models you might have to do some techniques and then find out how it looks. If it is not, just go back and change it. Uh, back to Photoshop and then paint again, and then bring it back over, check it out if it works or not. If it doesn't work, again, make modifications. So it's basically a trial and error process. Uh, so that's why I started with a very simple model. So I'll share this uh, Maya file with you. So the file actually has, um, my screen is still shared, right? Yes? Yes, it's visible. Okay. It is so um, if you go, okay, thank you very much. So if you go here, um, I basically have two um, layers here. So one of this layer will have, well, let me just open this file without saving. House. And even for the dice. So I have one of uh, this layer that has got the textured file and then the other one is basically a non-textured file. Okay, so this is without any UVs. So um, I'll share this file with you. So. Uh, you can basically uh, take this file and use this one as reference to create the same texture. So this would this could be your uh, practice. So uh, and another important thing in terms of Maya, no matter what kind of work that you do in Maya, it requires a lot of practice. Okay, so I tell my students you should practice at least eight hours every day for three months minimum to learn Maya. So. 
um, it is more like a full-fledged learning uh, process that you have to do uh, to become an expert, right? I hope that answers the question. All right. Uh, yeah, Parameshwari, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. I now call upon uh, Samiksha Bose to deliver the vote of thanks. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes. You are audible. Yes. Okay. On behalf of the School of Communication Department, I extend my heartfelt thanks to our guest, Mr. Andrew Reese, for spending your precious time and enlightening the session. Your vast intellection on today's topic was extremely thought-dripping. Thank you, sir, for explaining us about the two dimensional textures in every dimension possible. I thank all the faculty members and my teaching staff, Ms. Parameshwari ma'am, for organizing this seminar perfectly without any glitches. I also thank my dear friends for your active participation. With warm wishes, we conclude today's session. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Andrew, for taking out your time to be with us. So uh, definitely, you know, even the students who do not have, uh, uh, you know, any kind of uh, experience with 3D modeling, especially, you know, the first year students who have just uh, stepped uh, into undergraduation. So probably after this uh, session, uh, you know, an interest must have been kindled uh, in them to learn 3D uh, studio. So thank you so much for your session. Thank you. Looking forward to more sessions from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Had an excellent uh, session, and we saw practically the new uh, everything in Manda, KQB, and the next video. And uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. And uh, our students also uh, ready to work for eight hours a day. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, Andrew, uh, a person that is uh, a hard worker and a very skilled and diligent person and a very busy person to read. So thank you once again for being here and this afternoon. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.